Recently, I overclocked my 233 MHz Pentium MMX to 291 MHz. It sounds like a drastic leap for a CPU like this, but by how much is it exactly? This Asus TX97X motherboard sporting Intel's 430TX chipset is known to be a very good overclocker, making it a little easier to hold out a year or so for the then upcoming 440BX chipset, which finally gave consumers a native 100MHz frontside bus to drastically improve overall system performance. Here in 1997 though, we're stuck with 66 megahertz buses, but some of us can still try to lift ourselves up from that constraint. I use a number of things in my setup which don't really have the authenticity and overclock configuration from 1997 should have, including a comparably beefy stock cooler designed for socket 370 CPUs with Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste as well as a single PC100 SD RAM module with only four chips. These components will maximize system stability, which is very much needed at higher bus speeds to prevent program crashes or data corruption. Also installed in the system is a Matrox Millennium G200, the usual 3Com 3C905C TXM network card, two 12 megabyte Voodoo 2 cards from Diamond Multimedia in an SLI configuration, and a Sound Blaster R64 Gold. For posterity, I'm going to run several benchmarks at the stock CPU and frontside bus speeds. The benchmarks of choice are SpeedSys 4.78, Doom, Quake, the original DOS executable, and Quake 2. All benchmarks will be run under Windows 95B and its MS-DOS mode wherever necessary. Already a 233 MHz Pentium MMX is quite capable in a lot of applications. It's hard to get Doom to lag on a system like this, and Quake is able to reach a little under 60 frames per second at the lowest resolution. Quake 2 is more punishing on the CPU at the lowest resolution in software rendering, but naturally a Voodoo 2 SLI setup really boosts the frame rate even at 1024 x 768. Now raising the CPU's voltage is a fact of life for all who want to overclock. Overvolting puts more strain on the CPU and makes it generate more heat, but the extra voltage is necessary in order to allow the system to sustain faster clocks so it can avoid program crashes, data corruption, or even failures to complete post. The Asus TX97X seems to have really good voltage regulation, as I only need to raise the CPU voltage by 0.1 volts even at the highest possible clock settings for this board. Keeping the clock multiplier of 3.5 and raising the front side bus speed to 75 MHz and then 83 MHz, my 233 MHz Pentium MMX seemed to be fully resilient against crashes at 262 MHz and 291 MHz respectively. This, of course, is taking into account I didn't have the system running overnight, but as any overclocker would strive to see, the raw CPU performance and memory bandwidth grow very significantly, allowing this machine to absolutely shred Doom and break the 60 frames per second barrier in Quake at the lowest resolution. Obviously, the same goes for Quake 2, and pairing a 291 MHz Pentium MMX with SLI could help you hold out until even better systems become readily available in 1999. At that point, you could then move your SLI configuration over and marvel at a 500 MHz CPU, casually decimating your favorite games in regards to frame rate. With such drastic improvements displayed by the Pentium MMX being overclocked, I suppose you wouldn't have even needed a Pentium 2 in 1997, at least for playing games. I haven't set up a 233 MHz Pentium 2 system to test this again, so workstation software may benefit from a Pentium 2 much more. While I did take a paranoid measure with some of the components I used, 291 MHz has been achieved on Pentium MMX systems even back when they were at their prime. I got an AOPEN AX5T after reading an NN Tech article from January 12, 1998 talking about this incredible speed it could pull off with very little overvolting. To my disappointment, 
Mine has a malfunctioning SMC controller on it. Previously, I used my TX97X to overclock the Pentium MMX to 250MHz with an 83MHz frontside bus at stock voltage, confusing it with a 75MHz bus at the time. Given its proven stability during the entirety of day one of the final stream, I figured I should try 291MHz on that board. Turns out I already had the thing I wanted to attain such a high speed. As an extra measure, I ran my tests at 250 MHz to see if the clock multiplier was doing anything. Sure enough, it was. Anything that can fit into the 32 kilobytes of total L1 cache will enjoy leaps in application performance even as the onboard L2 cache remains stationary between 250 and 291 MHz. Given the TX97X I have is a fairly early revision on top of all of this, it shouldn't matter too much which one you get. Moreover, the TX97X is just one member of the entire TX97 family. Some have EDO SIM slots and or come in an AT form factor, so if you really want to use an AT case with a Pentium MMX, you can go with that and you should be able to achieve the same results as with the ATX variant. As for earlier Intel chipsets or the later SuperSocket 7 motherboards, I'm left wondering which ones can catch up to or exceed what the Intel 430TX has proven to be capable of. If you have old hardware like this, come share it with us on